Todd, I'd like to talk to you today about a concept uh, in negotiation that I've started to call the last 180, and it refers to the final 180 seconds or the last three minutes of a negotiation. Having observed many practitioners and students of negotiation, I want to set the context for this discussion by talking about a concern that informs it. Often people negotiate for relatively long periods of time. Uh, negotiation uh, often involves uh, serious work at the level of uh, detailed analysis. And people show signs of decision-making fatigue. And yet it is critical in the final stages of negotiation not to lose control of the process by slowly disengaging, being vulnerable to what scholars might call agreement bias, meaning I'm so tired, I've had enough of this process, let me just sign the paper and shake your hand and we'll have a toast to our success. And I view that as a sloppy, uh, less than careful ending uh, to an important negotiation process. And so my sense is that just as at the beginning of a negotiation process, indeed perhaps more so, we need to be extra vigilant uh, in the closing stages of a negotiation as to what piece of paper we might ultimately be putting our names upon. So let me introduce uh, for you some of these ideas and components that comprise the last 180. And they are all grounded uh, in something that I call the negotiator's pause. And the pause is this capacity to step away from the table, perhaps both figuratively and literally, to stand away from the document, to stand away from my colleagues at the table, and ask a series uh, of important questions that I'm asking really privately to myself. And so first and foremost uh, amongst these is, have I addressed all of my concerns here? I may have been so focused on a set of details that I've left out a major concern of mine, and perhaps even one of yours, but we became so focused on details that we didn't uh, get there. Second, I wanna think hard about, especially in a multi-issue negotiation, to reflect and think hard about the interrelationship between all the elements of the agreement. So for example, if there were four or five elements you and I may have been attracted to, or indeed spent a disproportionate amount of time looking at items one and three, coming to agreement on these. But I didn't see, and perhaps you didn't see, that items two and four, in the context of looked at in their interrelationship in a package, may indeed produce a toxic outcome, an unintended negative consequence that we hadn't looked at. So the negotiator's pause is an important point and time to look at that. The pause also includes the need to push myself and by extension my counterpart to ask whether in fact we have created enough value today. And so the pause is also about in these last minutes of the negotiation to see if we can squeeze out some of the inefficiencies uh, in our value-creating process and, in fact, include more value-creating opportunities for both of us. And lastly, the pause is about, in this very uncertain and turbulent world, asking and making sure that we have some type of dispute resolution mechanism and process in place should at some point in the near or distant future uh, we have a number of disagreements that could arise from in fact improbable scenarios. 
So in sum, the last 180 is about preparing myself to sign the agreement with you, but being clear that I've looked at all my concerns and interests and how the whole package looks before committing myself. Sounds very interesting. Um, you've talked about this in sort of a reflective way as something that you do. You take a pause and, and think about it yourself. What about uh, your counterparts? If you're representing a constituency, a larger organization, um, is this also a time to check with others? Yes, and so I think it's uh, critical. Uh, the pause uh, sometimes sounds like a misnomer because pause itself in temporal terms sounds like anywhere from a few seconds to a minute or two. In the world of diplomacy, uh, I might have to check back with headquarters in Washington or in the corporate world with the company headquarters uh, in New York or Los Angeles. So it's very much a pause that could be anywhere from uh, minutes to a few hours or a day, perhaps, where all the stakeholders uh, that I anticipate being affected by this agreement are acknowledged in what I'm about to sign here today. And what would happen... Um, if the pause does raise a red flag, you raise, mentioned the toxic outcomes, what happens then? I think two things uh, happen. Uh, the first is that I signal to my counterpart that having taken the time to reflect on uh, this potential agreement or package, it is not yet uh, ready for prime time, meaning it's in neither of our interests uh, to sign a package with these flaws. In short, we both done hard, uh, diligent, uh, and good work today. But taking the moment to reflect raises for me a number of issues that I think we jointly uh, need to uh, work on. Uh, secondly, when I need to get ratification uh, for this agreement, all parties will appreciate uh, that I have given them due notice about both the opportunities and potential uh, weaknesses or vulnerabilities uh, with this agreement and that it won't be signed until uh, these are solved. And that seems to tie into the dispute resolution mechanism, the, uh, the fact that 180, last 180, really, um, there's, there are things that happen after that last segment in a way. Right. So the last 180 is about getting ready for uh, robust implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about a signaling to you, my counterparts, that I do want an ongoing a uh, trusting uh, relationship, mm -hmm. but recognizing under conditions of uncertainty and turbulence, uh, there could be bumps along the way and that I want to make sure that we have mechanisms uh, to uh, address them, so-called built-in shock absorbers. Very interesting. So it really seems to come um, down, if I can distill it into a couple of things, to um, Confirming the agreement itself, making sure you're ready for the next steps, and making sure that both you and your constituencies are on board. Is that? Yes, I think yeah. that that uh, largely uh, captures it. And what I'm trying to make sure of is that we actually get to implementation, that both of us can actually uh, meet our commitments, and we are using the agreement as the beginning of creating a new relationship and that the agreement in itself uh, is not the termination of relationship building.